Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. Now today we're going to look at creating a card like this using this gorgeous technique to create uh, beautiful coloured stamped images on your cards but um, mostly on your inked backgrounds. Uh, it's a really, really easy technique and I actually give you two stages to it. So I give you a nice quick technique that you can do if you need super fast cards. And then we also go into more detail, adding the color and the shading and so on. So I hope you enjoy this. Everything that I'm going to show you in just a moment is linked down below, um, as are things like an alternative playlist that I think might interest you. But if you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you could subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Okay, let's get on with this straight away. So let's start with a quick rundown of the supplies that I've used to create this card. First of all, you're going to need some cardstock. I really love to use the uh, Creative Craft Products stamping cardstock available from Craft Stash. It is an exclusive brand of theirs. Um, as I say, everything that I'm mentioning here is going to be linked down below for you. So you've got some white cardstock. If you don't have Creative Craft Products, uh, any sort of stamping, reasonably smooth cardstock that you can do your ink blending onto is perfect. We're going to be using Distress Oxide, but Distress Inks will also work. I'll talk through my color palette in a moment. I've got some glitter cardstock, and I believe this is the Sizzix um, Opulence cardstock, so it comes from when their gold pack, which also has things like satin and mirror card in it as well. The die that I'm using is the Magnolia Half Tone Stamp and Die Set. I'm using one of the two dies, so it's the one with the outlines. There's also a stamp and a shadow die in there too, but we're not touching those today. Now I'm also going to be using, which I've already put onto the back of my glitter card here, is some double-sided adhesive sheets. Um, just one of these at the moment, but again, Creative Craft Products brand. There's a few of these at the moment left in stock, but uh, again, I will link them down below. Then I'm going to be using colouring pencils and the brand I use are these ones, so Prismacolor. Now I do have the full set of 150, so all the colours, but you can buy much smaller sets as well. In fact, I think you can even buy sets as small as 12 or 24. So, uh, But these are a really, really good pencil brand, but they're not the cheapest. Um, but I do honestly believe, and I always say this, that I don't think the pencil brand matters too much when you're crafting, if you're not doing fine art or anything. I think you can get away with a nice and expensive um, brand of pencil crayon, certainly to get you started. And then if you find you're using them lots, maybe invest in some uh, something a little more pricey. Those are not available at Craft Stash, but you'll find them uh, on somewhere like Amazon. So the only other thing I've got then is a card base. Now I've cut my card stock that I'm going to be working on down ever so slightly smaller. So I've just got a border around and this is a five by seven inch white card base. Okay, so besides things like water and adhesive, uh, that's everything I'm using. So let's just move on to quickly my color palette. Um, I chose that by going through my swatches. Now the swatches that I have are all generated while I create the Distress Oxide color combination videos, which are also on my YouTube channel channel. Um, if you look at the playlist on my channel, you'll find the Distress Oxide range there. We're working through all the Distress Oxide colours alphabetically, looking at each one and creating combinations with them. And when I do my swatches, I do save them all and I write on the back what colours I've used. So I've then got this huge library of uh, colour blends and some of them I love, some of them not so much, but it's a really good resource for me to choose my colours from. So today I'm going to be using this one and this is using gathered twigs, aged mahogany and salvaged patina. So the first thing I need to do is die cut my flower. So this is the lovely Magnolia stamp and die set. As I say, this is really low in stock at the moment. It's the second restock we've had. I don't know if we're going to do a third restock, but if you are interested in this one, maybe have a look at Craft Sash like super quick. Um, again, linked below for you. Um, but I'm just going to cut this out from the glitter cards and I've got the self-adhesive, the double-sided adhesive sheet stuck to the back already. That's just going to help me with placing it a little later on in the die. But I think it looks like everywhere's cut through absolutely fine. So I'll pop that to the side and the die set there. We'll come to that in a little while. Let's now prepare our background. So I'm going to start with a blending mat on my surface to protect it. And this is a clear blending mat again from Craft Stash and again linked down below. Um, I think I'd like salvage patina and aged mahogany to be kind of two of the main colours here. So we'll start with these. And I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually have the gathered twigs maybe around the edge rather than having it in 
a combination like this with the brown just at the bottom. I think I'm going to do blue into the red as the background and then blend the brown as almost sort of a vignette around the outside. So I'll go ahead and do that. It will take me a little while because this is a larger piece of cardstock. And you can do any colour combination you like within this uh, technique. It's really forgiving, but I would just definitely say if you can choose darker colours, darker or brighter colours, something that's quite bold, then do so because the effect's going to look better, I feel. Now, now always going over a little bit further than the area I want that colour to be in because this is going to aid with our blending. So you see I've just gone over a little bit more than half the cardstock there. Then the aged mahogany. Now this is a slightly smaller brush, this one. You do find that uh, it looks a little bit uneven and patchy. So sometimes leave it to dry. You can even see it here. You can see the patchiness because I've got bright lights on here uh, in the studio. But it looks patchy, but actually when it dries, it kind of goes creamy and it's much, much nicer and smoother finish. So sometimes give it time to just dry for a little while before you start reapplying more and more ink. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the lighter color, the salvage patina, and I'm going to pick plenty up on my brush and I'm going to go through the center there and just start dragging that red into the blue. I'm doing it this way with lots of salvage patina on my brush because the aged mahogany is a darker color. And because it's a darker color, it's a stronger color and it will overpower the blue too much if I let it. You see, I've just worked that in quite nicely. I'm going to do a bit more just here and then I'm going to do the same the other side. So go into the solid color in the middle and just work the two together. You can find here, you can get some, you can see a bit there, red on my blue brush. That's fine, just give it a wipe once you finish doing your blending. And once you realize you're actually dragging color down, you see these large kind of chunks there. What you need to do is smaller circles. So if you do smaller circles, you'll blend that much, much nicer. It can be really tempting to do big circles and get it all blended really quickly. But if you can do smaller circles, you'll get a much, much neater blend line. It's a little more time consuming. And depending on your dexterity, it can be a little bit harder on the wrists. I'm not pressing hard, it's just the action. There we go, see, much, much nicer blend there. So there's part of our background. And because I've got the red on there, I'm just going to wipe that onto a piece of kitchen towel and clean that. And the same with the aged mahogany, just to take off any excess. Now, I'm just going to go round with the brown now. So I've got gathered twigs, which is in this combination, but it's actually on the end in the combination, but I'm going to frame this piece. Okay, happy with that, lovely. Now I'm going to take some water and I'm going to do, let's just cover up my ink pad so I don't spray water on those. I'm just going to do a light mist first of all. So one light mist over everything and that just starts to give it a little bit of a speckled look. And then I'm going to just flick a few larger splats on there. Not too much though, I don't want too much on there. So we're going to give that just a minute or two to dry. There we go, so we've created our background and we can now decide whether we want it with the blue at the top or the bottom. Now, as a general rule, I will always go with the darker color at the bottom unless there's a really good reason, like I'm doing a particular sunset, for example, and I need the deeper, darker, brighter color at the top, whatever it may be, but usually dark goes down the bottom, it's heavier. Looking at this color combination at the moment, um, it's not intended to be Christmassy or festive at all, but I think it could actually really work like that. You can see here we've still got a couple of wet patches. They'll dry as we carry on with this uh, next stage. So I'm not worried about getting my heat gun on there. So I'm now going to come back to my lovely gold or glittery gold die cut. And I'm going to carefully take the outline away from everything else. And this can be a little bit time, um, time consuming just because I've attached it to the adhesive 
on the backing and also because as I say this gold cardstock is absolutely beautiful it's got a lovely subtle sheen to it but it does also stick to itself a little bit when you die cut it so you do need to pull each piece apart so I'm going to release all of this I know it's all cut because we tested that earlier I'm going to release it and I'm going to place it onto my background okay so sadly the glitter card did not work um, I wanted to leave that into the video though because I think it's important for you to see how different um, brands and different types of materials do die cut it die cut beautifully um, it's just that the, the glitter kind of holds itself together so when it comes to a die cut like this that's really intricate trying to pop out the little pieces as I was pulling the little pieces out it was pulling the glitter off of the cardstock so I decided to go ahead and just re-die cut this again from plain old mirror card. I didn't put the adhesive backing on this time purely because I forgot, but that means I can actually show you another way of um, gluing your die cut on. So if you've got some wet glue and just really tiny die cut or intricate die cut to stick down, spray glue will work. Um, but if you want something that's a little uh, firmer, a little less likely to peel off over time, um, just a wet glue with a sponge is perfect. So if you put it, pop it onto one of your blending mats so you don't um, damage your uh, table, desk, sorry, couldn't think of the word there. And I'm just dabbing this over the back. I've got a little bit of die cut there. Now the, the sponge does absorb a lot of glue. Just trying to be careful not to rub the actual mirror card into the glue either so on the mat and keeping it in one place there we go so lift that up shouldn't have too much underneath you might have a little it shouldn't have too much underneath and I think I'm going to position that in the corner like so I know I want it overlapping ever so slightly there we go so there's our beautiful magnolia flower so the next stage is to bring in some water so you're going to need your water and ideally um, a nice small paint brush if you don't have a, uh, a paint brush and water but you do have a water brush instead like this one that's absolutely perfect now i'm going to go into each of the petals and i'm going to apply some water and straight away as you can see instantly that is starting to lighten up the colour underneath. Now I'm going to do this a couple of times. Within each petal, just lifting up a little more of the colour each time. Now I don't want it to get to a stage where I'm actually peeling the paper back, depending on the cardstock you're working on. So that's plenty for me. Now I'm going to go round and I'm going to do this on each inside each of the petals of the flower and then I'm also going to probably do it on the leaves as well. So there's the first effect and to be honest that is really beautiful on its own. It gives the look of vellum a slight translucency to the flowers. I think it's really really pretty. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit more detail in it and this is where my colouring pencils come in. So I'm going to bring my big um, big box of colouring pencils in and I'm going to choose some colours. Now what I'm going to choose is a colour that is similar but a little bit darker to the red and a next shade up, a lighter shade and then the same with the blue. Similar but a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter as well. So I've also then got myself my white. So as you can see these are our colours. I think they're all going to work really nicely together. Now I'm going to start in the centres with a darker flower. So I'm going to go with my darkest colour. Is a tissue or something on there? Make sure this is thoroughly dry. I've allowed it to dry for a little while to allow the water to react. But I've then also used my heat gun just to speed up the process and make sure this cardstock is completely dry before I start. So just caught the die cut there. That needs gluing down ever so slightly more. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to put down some really deep colour. Now to build up deep colour with colouring pencils you don't want to go in too hard straight away. So you actually want to build up the layers gradually, not pressing hard at all on your pencil. And that's what I'm going to do here. So just going around different directions, working out so that towards 
towards the centre of the flower, so about a third of the way along the petal, it kind of fades out. And as I say, where you want the solid colour, make sure you go in different directions to capture the grain of the petal. Then I'm going to go in with my uh, medium colour that I've chosen that's going to blend nicely into this. And at this point you may think, well actually that's, as I have, that's actually too similar to my background colour. It looks lovely there like that, but I can't see any colour. So I'm going to go and find myself a colour that is between these two instead. Perfect. So I've found myself another colour. This is called Mahogany Red, which actually, considering we're using the colour Aged Mahogany, is uh, perfect. So I'm just going to start, go back to that dark and just reinstate that because I did kind of lose it a little bit when I put that lighter shade on. And then around the middle of the petal, I'm going to put this Mahogany Red. Again, I'm not pressing hard. I'm pressing lightly and I'm just going over it layer by layer overlapping where the um, darker colour is but overlapping it in strokes and again gently all the time and then I'm going to come in with my white at the end because the white will show up much easier now you've removed the colour from underneath so I think with this one I can use this mid-tone that I found actually is the same colour as the background just to blend everything together there so the join between the mahogany and the white there. it's lovely so I'll just work at going over gently as I say always gently each of the colours until I'm happy with the blend that I've got through my flower I want to I want to keep that kind of translucent colour as much as possible so it looks like the flower is really delicate on the surface of the background there we go I'm happy with that that looks beautiful okay so I'm going to continue and I'm going to do that for this flower here this flower here there's a little bit there's just the touch top of a flower here but that will only require the darkest color and then I'm going to repeat the process with these colors for this one here as well So there's my colouring all done and blended. Um, you can of course keep your flowers the same colour throughout. I just wanted to kind of echo the blue that's in the background. That's entirely up to you. But don't these just look gorgeous once they've got the shading on? Now, I, it did occur to me that while I was colouring, I didn't actually explain why I lift the colour off in the first place. And that's because the pencil crayons are going to go onto your cardstock and be much more vibrant with a pale background. But alternatively, I also I wanted to show you what this would look like if you are in a hurry and you just want to lift the colour off with the water and give it that translucent look and leave the card like that, you absolutely can. But if you are going to go ahead and do some colouring by lifting the most of the colour off in the side of the petals, once you put your pencil crayon down, you're just going to get that much more sort of more true colour um, as if you were colouring almost on white card stock. So it's easier for you to then pick out your colours. So all I'll need to do now is to pop this onto my card base. So just using either some foam or a wet glue. I tend to like to go with the wet glue just to keep postage down, but also so things don't catch. If I put it in an envelope, it's not going to catch onto anything. There we go. Now I think for this one at the moment, I'm going to leave this without a sentiment. Um, I think the sentiment would naturally sit around here. I wouldn't want to cover this over with a sentiment so it would be a little tag off to the side. I'm going to leave it for now and wait until I have an occasion specifically that I want to uh, put a sentiment on for or I might just stamp something in the centre instead. But I hope this tutorial has helped some of you. I hope some of you try it. If you do please do tag me, let me know. I'm also on Instagram. I'm also on uh, Facebook as well. So you'll find me over there and you can of course tag me, share with me your photos where you've made something from one of my tutorials. And if you like this and you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up and a subscribe too. Thank you for taking the time to watch me everybody. Take care, I'll see you again very, very soon.